Hello and welcome, this is Dennis Whiskers from Whiskers Educational Materials, that's VEMonline.net. In my last video we talked about typical thoracic vertebrae. This video is going to talk about atypical thoracic vertebrae. There are a total of 12 thoracic vertebrae in vertebral column. T2 through T8 are considered as typical thoracic vertebrae and the rest are considered as atypical thoracic vertebrae. T1, T9, T10, T11, and T12. So what does make them so special? Why do we have to distinguish between typical and atypical thoracic vertebrae in the first place? So really it's all about the way they articulate with the ribs. Any of the uh, typical thoracic vertebrae will have three facets for articulation with the ribs on one side, and three facets for the articulation with the rib on the other side. Superior facets will articulate with the uh, corresponding rib. So for example, T5 will articulate with the fifth rib superiorly and with the sixth rib inferiorly. So now, what about the rest? What makes the other thoracic vertebrae so special? The first thoracic vertebrae is distinguished by the character of the upper facets on the sides of the body. They are circle and an outline as each articulates with the whole head of the first rib. Lower facets are small and semilunar in shape. The spine is thick, long and horizontal. It can be identified easily in the living subject for it forms a visible projection below the spine of the vertebra prominence. Let's go back to this image and here we can clearly see that T1 has this circular shaped facet that's meant to articulate with the first rib. So we have circular shaped facet above and semilunar shaped facet below. And these are the key differences between T1 and typical thoracic vertebra. The ninth thoracic vertebra may possess all the features of a typical thoracic vertebra, but it often fails to articulate with the head of the tenth rib. And in this case, the lower facets of the body are absent. So ninth thoracic vertebra will have superior facets that will articulate with the ninth rib. But it doesn't have the inferior facet for the tenth rib. We can see that there's slight indention on the body, but the facet for the tenth rib will be found on tenth thoracic vertebra. The tenth thoracic vertebra articulates with the head of the tenth rib only. The facet is placed at the upper border of the body. It is usually incomplete, but when the 10th rib fails to articulate with the 9th thoracic vertebra, it is complete and circular in outline. The transverse process may or may not have articular facet for the tubercle of the 10th rib. So the facet for articulation with the head of the rib on 10th thoracic vertebra is going to be circular in shape. Usually it is not 100% complete, usually there is going to be slight indention on superior aspect. As well, it will be shifted slightly posterior. So it will occupy some of the pedicles area here. Articular surface on transverse process of T10 for the uh, turbicle of the rib may be present or may not be present. The 11th thoracic vertebrae articulates with the head of the 11th rib only. The circular facet is placed close to the upper border of the body and extends backwards on lateral aspect of the pedicle. The transverse process is small but can be gripped between the finger and thumb. It is not marked by an articular facet. Here you can see that the articular surface for the head of the rib on T11 is completely circular in shape. Again it is positioned slightly posterior. Just like T10 it will occupy some of the pedicles area here. Transverse process is much smaller as we can see and it won't have articular surface for the turbicle of the rib. 12th thoracic vertebrae just like 11th articulates with the head of the 12th rib only. The facet is roughly circular in shape and it lies below upper border of the body and extends over lateral aspect of the pedicle. The body is large and approximates closely to lumbar type. 
transverse process is small and insignificant and it is not marked by an articular facet. It is subdivided into superior, lateral and inferior tubercles. The inferior articular processes are turned laterally and articular facets are convex from side to side, like those of a lumbar vertebra. Last two thoracic vertebrae, that's T11 and T12, are quite similar. Both of them will articulate with the head of the rib only. So there is no facet on transverse process. T12 resembles the shape of a lumbar vertebra. Its articular processes are turned laterally. And just like lumbar vertebra, they are convex from side to side. So there you have it, atypical thoracic vertebrae. That's T1, T9, T10, T11, T12. This is it for this time. On our next video, we will discuss ribs and how they articulate with thoracic vertebrae. Don't forget to check out Pro Health Systems homepage. Now, all this information can be found on Pro Health Systems. Uh, all the images uh, from Grey's Anatomy's textbook. A lot of very useful stuff. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Pro Health Systems channel. If you found this useful, share, like. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you soon.